at eolich in urology. The Nigriach Hospital of Southern General on the Glossacho Enyamale is figured who will, but Eoliche is a matter of work. M.E. Rene Kutjoch Nagotter Sach Geolishek Olhe Harvard. I is Hanile Itti de Gundahu de Lissahu Mikkel. I have come across it along with many, many other similar theories, and they may, the person putting out the theory may offer advice and forms of treatment and make some money out of it. But other than that, I doubt if the, any, I've never seen a patient to be cured by an application of any, of any of these practices so far. There is an essential biochemical or molecular component to the illness which needs to be elucidated. And research seems, should be along the grounds into these illnesses rather than dealing with psychological talk-to-talk -talk nonsense. I, I, have, I have not seen any form of cognitive therapy or talking therapy to be of any value. I'm not, I'm not saying that if someone who is in authority and who offers you warmth and kindness and who, who's authoritative in what he says won't have an effect for the benefit, it will. But the, the, the answer that it's the cure, I'm afraid, is, is wishful thinking. Gaia dochter pihene saas an nye mi on mochke te koek, nur hoek a soel san a darne oed ed a hier tjelle klare te gantinus ek a royal free hospital an a wunen, dicht bane fichet na patreye an a koeke te koek. Hoek a nopper ek a kru aarach oor a doi et se wil sinne kaya te retinus ed a wil a mi in eest. Now the royal free hospital was of particular interest because technicians, medical students, doctors, nurses, uh, came down with an illness which could not be explained and unfortunate for these patients they were examined by a psychiatrist and a medical student and they came to the conclusion that it was mass hysteria it was somehow a, a, a psychological disorder that had a contagion factor um, so I wondered what had happened to these patients who had been involved in this outbreak. So I got these patients, collected quite a number of them, and we were able to have them uh, come to Glasgow, and I investigated them in, in Glasgow. And we carried out each and every type of investigation to see if we could find an abnormality that would demarcate these cases. With the exception of one patient, they were all entirely and absolutely healthy and normal individuals. These were normal individuals who still had the most overwhelming fatigue, who had abnormalities of sleep and the other non-specific complaints, and they had had these all these years and never got better. We tested these patients for immune abnormalities. We tested them using the most sophisticated techniques, namely polymerase chain reaction studies, looking for enteroviruses that had a, a tendency to involve muscle. And the first abnormality that we were able to hang our hat on, so to speak, was my wife, or late wife, who was the professor of pathology here, she noted that the mitochondria, the organs dealing with energy production in, in every cell, that they were abnormal uh, when you looked at them histologically on electron microscopy. So that was one abnormality that we found. And the second abnormality was doctor, we had a, 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 a patient with a classical syndrome following chickenpox and we had him analysed at Oxford University by Professor George Radha. And he showed that the patient had an abnormality of muscle. This abnormality of muscle was very interesting in that when he was tested at rest, his muscles were normal. But once he started doing exercise, then within a very short period, he switched from aerobic to anaerobic oxidisation. Shetjaloch Shepherd, Banyam Gandochta de Ok, who had caught Banolov Bihan. 
like many doctors, I thought this was either a non-existent illness or was all hysterical nonsense. I was at medical school in the early 1970s. I was taught by my superiors that this was in actual fact hysterical nonsense and some psychiatrists at the medical school I worked at had actually produced a paper on this and it was published in the British Medical Journal. And that is partly why many doctors, certainly of my generation, um, have believed that this was an illness which either didn't exist or was hysteria, was malingering, was, was all in the mind. And that was my view until I actually went down with a dose of ME and it took a succession of hospital visits over probably a period of a year with no management, no diagnosis. And it was only actually when I saw Professor Peter Byrne in, uh, in Glasgow um, that I got a diagnosis of this illness.